Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. The wings are done. We'll get back to that in a bit. Let's finish up the fuselage. Okay, to begin with, the right side. And I'll show it to you. The right side already has some covering on it. And you can see where the line is. Right in here. Uh, that's where the overlap's going to be, where this kind of comes over the turtle deck on the back and up in the front. I figured that's going to be the easiest way to do it. So let me go ahead and grab the other camera and uh, give you a little up close and personal on, uh, on how I'm doing this. All right, just to kind of show you how I'm doing this, as you can see right here, there's a little bit of an air pocket underneath this part, and this is where the cowling attaches to, because I wanted it to stand off. Just come in with a, uh, just, just pretty much a razor blade, and just go ahead and cut the edges here, and then I'll, I'll get these glued down properly um, with, the, with the nitrate dope. I, I'm not concerned about this because the cowling comes back to about here, so this is all covered anyway. I just want to go ahead and get everything run all the way out to the front. Um, I have not tightened this up yet. That's why you can see the wrinkles here. Uh, a couple little spots. Um, I left it wide open because it was just where I was trying to compress and pull the fabric. Um, the best thing to do is not get it so completely saturated around it that when you go to warm it up with the iron, um, you're going to be really fighting that to get that so that this little bump right here is no longer... Um, so that's why I'm doing it this way. So what I'll do is I'll come around with the scissors. I'm going to cut around the outside edge of this, giving about, oh, maybe an eighth inch uh, just to wrap around. I'll do it the same through here. What you do is whenever there's either a, a compound curve or a convex curve, so this one right here is an outside curve, I'll put some little slashes through it um, just so that way when I go ahead and roll it over, I don't know how well you can see it. I'm going to give it a shot. E okay, there we go. You can see how it's got the little teeny slits in it, and that's just to cover it. Once again, this part up here will not be seen. It's under the cowling. So this here, as you can see, I've already came in, uh, and this was, this was a little bit of a while back. Um, the lines you see on the inside is uh, epoxy, thinned out with some 91% isopropyl alcohol, and then put in so that way any oils uh, from the gas engine and the gasoline won't absorb into the wood hopefully so anyway so i'll get this all taken care of shrink it down and then i'm just going to come in with a couple with well well one good coat to begin with um of the nitrate dope just to get this locked in place and then i will bring you back on how i am going to be measuring because these pieces that are going to go up here on the turtle deck I'm going to be making a measurement from about, oh, maybe about way down this way, probably about, I don't know, eighth inch shy of the line. This is, this is the center line. Uh, that's why I want the overlap here. Um, so if I even came down about this far, measure from here to that on the corresponding side. So I can go with that distance here, and then we're going to do it back here. Do the same thing back here at the tail, from this side to that side. And then I'm going to be taking some of that yeah that's uh, that's what's left of this big bundle of covering and there's still quite a bit left um and i will go ahead and it's, i'll bring you guys back in when i'm cutting that because it's either a, it's either a go or a no-go it's either going to be right on or it's going to be a complete failure and i'm kind of hoping for the for the former so let me go ahead and get this stuff taken care of and then We'll try to get that top put on. All right, with the sides being finished, you can see here's the line. So the, the fabric comes all the way up to here and it stops. Now there is a line going down the middle and that was a seam line. And what I'm trying to do is I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna have the top covering end at that seam line. And this is a part that's been just crunching through my brain for probably about a month on how I wanted to go ahead and address this. That's why I jumped over to the wings and decided to come back to this last. So my goal, this is my goal, is to have this thing set up so that I can have it end right at the line and that could be the blend line or the paint line with the hopes that everything will work out nicely. And that's, that's the whole thing is the hopes. So I came in with a piece of uh, just paper and put it where it's not terminated here, it's gonna go farther. 
when I came in and measured with the big, I'm going to say it again, the four foot yardstick, <laughs> uh, it comes out to be uh, 20 and a quarter inches. So that's going to be the total overall length uh, when it's trimmed out. So it's going to be going longer. So I made it so it's going to be a half inch longer. But what I plan on doing is when this is all cut and laid out, it's, I'm going to test it first. Uh, and I'm hoping it's, everything's going to line up. That's going to be the tricky part. So what I did is I came in, I made an indicator mark here on the, on the paper, up on the center line, and then also on the other side. And I did the same to the tail. So I know that I'm going to pretty much be cutting the piece of fabric probably 21, 22 inches long. But I need to have this mark that I've got right here at 20 inches because it's 20 from here to here and even though I know that it's going to terminate at 20 and a quarter inches I has still have to have this because this is where the measurements are made a quarter inch before so like I said I'm hoping everything's going to end up nicely and the reason why I'm doing it this way is because wait for it Once this piece gets slid out, you're not gonna see where this seam line is, where the seam line ends, because I didn't want a seam line dropping down here and then heading this way. So that's why everything was set up around this, this joint right here. So let me go ahead and uh, get this thing off the bench and uh, uh, I'll kind of show you guys, hopefully, how I'm gonna get this thing all properly measured out. All right, now I'm going to show you how I got this all set up. All the lines are already drawn out because it took me probably about 10 minutes to figure out how I wanted to do it. And uh, the first thing I did was once the fabric got put out um, on the board, um, what I did was I just had to pretty much make sure that everything was square on the ends. So what I did is I came in, I set the, uh, the four foot yardstick uh, up so that it was five and a half inches off of this edge and then down here at the other or five and a half inches off the, this edge so that ended up being my straight line and that was how everything was set up so it was perpendicular so the end cuts are perpendicular to that straight line down the middle now what I did is I just came in uh, on the on the tail end of it I just put the marks on a piece of balsa and that was how I transferred the lines back here so that's my indicator marks on the outside in the back and then up in front, uh, because I already had a line drawn out across that was perpendicular, at 20 inches, I took my little piece of paper and went ahead and just transferred the marks uh, up in the front side. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on in and the brush, yep, so everything's already thinned out. So I'm going to come in with some nitrate dope and I'm going to go ahead and on the outside, I'm going to go ahead put some dope on the ends and then on the sides so that way when it comes time to cut it out um, I don't have to worry about anything fraying so keep your fingers crossed all right before I run out of battery power I've got everything set up pretty much the way I want it and I'm hoping that all is going to go very nicely on this one what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and kind of do a skunk stripe come all the way down the middle of it this way and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to be trying to shrink this. I'm going to try to do this all with nitrate dope. Uh, so once it's set in the middle, I'm just going to bring it down sideways with the brush to get everything in. And I'm hoping it looks like we're going to be pretty darn good on this one. Um, really close. So let's see what we can do.
all right let's see how well we could do with these cameras all right this side over here how well it focuses i'm about a 16th maybe a 32nd of an inch off of where it needs to be it's about that big so i can live with that that makes me happy now if we spin this little bird around without making it fall off the counter this side over here came out less than a 64th i mean it's almost perfect so i'm really happy with these how well this is to being exactly straight not 100 percent sure because you can see it kind of curves up towards the tail so how this is going to work with the paint line this is going to dictate the paint line so you know i got to try to figure out how well i want this to work because this should have been up here a little bit more and i have no idea why that thing came out like it did it just didn't seem to jive with my measurements so because this side came out really nice so what i may do is because it's still kind of wet i may come down with a straight edge put it on the side score it with a uh, a knife a, a razor knife and then go ahead and get it wet again because this stuff will loosen up get it wet and just pull it up and make that line straight so that's that's going to be next on my list to do right now all right before i have to head to work in 27 minutes let me show you what we got done so that took eh, i don't know about an hour and a half total time for me because i got down here about eight um so this it just uh, you can see it's it's going to get hit with an iron anyway i had one little thing that transmitted from the the fabric that was below the line up to the top here but that uh, i have not hit this with a heat with the heat iron yet so anyway uh it comes all the way to the back it's following the line it does something funky right here but that you won't see because once i uh paint it you won't see that little thing because plus i gotta sand it and get it dressed up now the other side all right now the other side the left side uh came out very nice uh, the line straight down right exactly where it's supposed to be and lift it off i got some little fuzzies here i got to go ahead and remove but that'll come off when i sand it um, but no so this top is done and this is what it took me so long to figure out how i wanted to do it because uh, i wanted to only do it once and uh and it worked out very nicely so the only thing left i have to do and that may be later on today when i get home uh is just the front part of the fuselage and then uh yeah all the covering is done so then it's just going to be a time where we're just going to call it the dope fest um where i'm going to be going uh because this is right now just one coat on everything i've got to get one more coat on then i've got to sand everything and then i've got to start using filler and even though i don't know if you can see it right there and we lost audio because that camera just ran out of battery. We're going to do this later on when I get home. Maybe. At least he's happy. All right. I got the fuse finished. Got the front done. And when you see the line, because I drew a straight line down, I had to watch the line to make sure everything was properly centered. It was not properly centered. It looks like a little winding road going down. You'll see it. It was, uh, I, I, purposely made uh the fabric a little bit larger just because of that little issue i had with the tail um i was able to straighten it up and everything looks good um but i really had to straighten up the front and it was all had to do with that little ridge that went across the top that the uh um that allows the cowling to stand proud of the fuselage um just so it's got better lines to it so that ended up creating a bigger hassle uh than i would like to admit to uh success comes from experience experience comes from failure i i had to lift uh i had to lift part of the fabric off and then try to relay it down uh and work with a little bit more and that's why you're going to see a little bit of waving back and forth and that was that was me trying to tell the fabric which way i wanted it to go and it kept saying no i'm not going to do it so let me grab the other camera and not only will i show you uh the great fabric job on the front uh, I'm also going to tell you what we have to do next. All right. I've just got this in here just to weigh it because if I pick it up, it's not too bad. 
because I've got the tail on. It's really light, so I think I can get away with it now. Anyway, so when I was putting this on, I had marks lined up. So I don't know how well you can see it. There was a little mark. There was a center line on the fuse, and then I had one right back here. But because, like I said, when I took this thing off, you can already see it kind of wavering that way. When I took it off and had to fight with it to make sure that I was going to have these lines properly cut in the right spot, um, this is really what happened with it. So you can see the way it comes down and it gets really squirrely as it was jumping over this. So even though it's all nicely covered and I'm happy with it, it was just a little bit bigger struggle, you know, than, than I would like to admit to. But it uh, took me probably total time from start to finish getting these little caps up here done and here before I covered the top. It was probably about an hour and a half. So, I mean, it wasn't too bad. It was a nice little thing to do this morning before I ran off to work. So anyway, what I wanted to show you is what we've got to do next. Ta-da! We've got to make that wedge. The wedge that's going to sit right down inside here. And it's going to it's gonna wrap around part of this in the back. Because here is where the, the rod comes across for the, uh, for the rudder. So this little wedge will be built and covered and my intent is to be able to slide it up so that way it'll fit over the top of this but if I need to get this where I've got to pull the rudder off and release it from the tail wheel because that's where the tail wheel connects to it um, I'm going to have to uh, have it so that there's going to be a groove f from here sliding up to the top and then have it end up at a T down here so that the rod can rotate back and forth and uh, it's going to be a fun little piece to try to make. And when I say fun, I mean not really much fun to make. So that will be uh, that'll be part of the next little gig we got to worry about uh, to try to see if we can get that done before I glue all of this in. Because as soon as I as soon as I get everything set up, that I'm happy with this little piece down, a little triangle piece down here. Um, we're going to go ahead and get this all glued in to get ready to start painting so i still have a little bit of ways to go before i get to this point so anyway why don't we go ahead and let's just call this a video and i'll see you guys next time back down in the shop